Hey guys, I'm Meg. Hope you've all had a really nice morning so far. I'm Harry and we hope to see you all on the call at 11.30. But for now, here's something we prepared earlier in the week. So, before we get started with today's talk, I have a little activity for all of you to do at home. What you're going to do is write down or type a list of 10 words that describe you. And then, and you might need to pause the video for this, I want you to cross out anything on that list which is negative or about a job or a hobby. Say if I described myself as a cook, I'd cross that off. Okay, you should now have a smaller list. Now some of you might have no things on your list, and some of you might still have a list of 10. But that doesn't matter. We'll get to that in a bit. Now, without further ado, into the talk. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were, writ were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were, to, were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Now this is Psalm 139, verse 13 to 18. And I know that throughout this week you've been hearing uh, bits from this passage from other people. Now, I personally don't do any knitting, but I have a couple friends who do, and from what I understand of it, it's quite a slow task. Now, I'm sure some people can knit incredibly fast, but in fact, the current world record is set by a lady in Shetland who managed to knit 255 stitches in three minutes. Now, I have no idea what a stitch is, or if that's impressive, but for reference, a hand-knitted jumper has about 75,000 stitches in it. So no matter how fast you are, it still takes a long time to make. 
Now you have three points to make in this talk, and the first one is, why does God love us? So when it says that God has knitted us together in our mother's womb, it's saying that God spent time and effort to make us. He didn't just copy and paste you from an old design he had. He spent time individually making you, taking care not to make any mistakes or errors. But not only did he knit you together, he knitted your parents together in their parents' room, and so on, so that you could be knitted just as he planned. This is something I used to really struggle with. When I was 15, I found what I thought was a pimple in my armpit, except it started to grow in size. After a visit to the doctor, they said it was an abscess. An abscess is described on the NHS website as being a painful collection of pus, usually formed by a bacterial infection. They're not that rare, so the doctors gave me some antibiotics which worked and the abscess went. But two months later I got another one. We went to the doctors again and they were they put yeah, and they just put me on another course of anti antibiotics. They were, they were a bit surprised to see me again though, because people usually only have one maximum in their life. One month later I was there again with a third one. This continued with the doctors giving me anti antibiotics but the abscess came, uh, kept coming back, until I had one almost all the time. My most notable ones are the one I got on my knee, where the actual pus bit grew to the size of a golf ball, uh, and I couldn't walk, and the time I had one on my shoulder so big that there was pus coming out of multiple holes. Mm -hmm. Over the space of a year, I had about 40 different ones, and as a result, was missing tons of school. It was so bad that I was on two or three types of painkillers when I had them. It turns out that for some reason I was more susceptible to getting them than most people would be. I used to really struggle with feeling fearfully and wonderfully made. Um, now three years later, I haven't had abscesses for two and a bit years. The doctors thought I would have them until my late twenties. I can also see now how me having those abscesses was part of God's plan for me. It was only after I started praying about them that I stopped having them. And now I see how prayer is a part of my everyday life and that is really important now I want you to go back to the piece of paper that you've written or the typing and you'll see that there's a big list of things in there now this is the part where I tell you that everything you've written on that list doesn't matter in God's eyes um, which you might be annoyed at me for making you write that list if none of it matters um, but whatever's on that list, in God's eyes, he doesn't mind. Like, he, he doesn't care if you're a good cook or whatever. He loves you no matter what. As you can see, God did so much to make certain that you were made just the way he wanted. When you spend so much time making something, it's common to feel proud of what you've done and feel a great sense of accomplishment. If you spent ages baking and decorating a cake or spent ages learning to complete a tough level on a game you've been playing in lockdown, at the end you would feel a tremendous feeling of accomplishment. You'd love this brilliant thing you'd achieved. Well that's what God feels when he looks at us. God loves each and every one of us because we are his wonderfully and carefully crafted creation. Now my second point is, who does God love? Now I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the story of the lost sheep. If you haven't I'll explain it to you. It's a story about a shepherd with a hundred sheep, but one day one of these sheep goes missing. Now instead of just accepting that now he only has 99 sheep, the shepherd sets out, determined to find that one sheep. He leaves the other 99 sheep to bring this one sheep back. That's how much, that's how much he loves each and every one of his sheep. A little known fact about sheep is they have absolutely no sense of direction. So in this story, it's shown that the other reason the shepherd went after the sheep is because the only way it could come back was if it was led. In this story, we are the sheep and God is the shepherd. But what this story also shows is that God loves each and every person individually. He doesn't love the, whole, the flock as a whole. God loves every person individually and knows every person individually. We are all loved by God, one by one. God loves you. My final question is how much does God love you? Later in the Bible, in John fifteen thirteen, it says, Greater love has no one than this, 
to lay down one's life for one's friends. Now, if you've watched Avengers Endgame, and if you haven't, then why not? <laughs> um, there will be a very big spoiler here. Uh, we see Iron Man pick up the Infinity Gauntlet and uh, sacrifice his life to prevent, to prevent Thanos from getting rid of half the universe's population for a second time. In John 3.16 it says, For God so loved the world that he sent down his one and only Son to die a horrible death, to take our sins and to provide a way for us to be with him forever. You are God's amazing creation and you are loved by him so much. Hey guys, so now we're going to go into a time of thinking about what Harry just taught us and a time of reflecting on God's love and how we see it in our lives, how we feel it, how God shows us, how much he loves us. And <clears throat> I'm just going to ask you to take out a piece of paper and a pen. And what we're going to do is trace out our hand onto the page. And... I'm just going to read out Psalm 139, and <clears throat> we've been reflecting and learning about this passage all week, and um, yeah, we're just going to take some time to yeah listen to it, and I would just love if anything that sticks out to you, whether it's a word or a phrase or a thought um, about God's love, it can be a question too, whatever um Whatever you're thinking about, just write it down onto the page, wherever you want. And <clears throat> yeah, I will just read it slowly for us and just, yeah, just reflect on it. Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I am going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell for, by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night, but even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life.
So we're almost done with our video now, but I've got some questions for you guys which we're going to discuss on the call at 11.30. These are one, what is something that you've made or spent lots of time doing over lockdown that you're proud of? Two, how does it make you feel that God would go to such great distances to win you back? And three, what can you take away from today that you can use in everyday life? So we're going to have a chat about these questions on the call and we'll get to hear what you guys think then. And I'm just going to pray to finish now. Okay. Dear God, thank you that you love us, no matter who we are. Thank you that we are fearfully and wonderfully created by you. Thank you that you love us so much that you sent Jesus down to die on the cross for us, so that we could be with you forever. Amen. So that's the end of this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed, and we really hope to see you at 11.30.